Welcome to today's virtual council meeting. Before we start the formal business of the meeting, I must remind you that the audio of this meeting is being live broadcast on the council's website and the video of the meeting will be published after. After the meeting, yeah? Okay, so we're going to yes. start now. Okay. Yes, can you hear me? thank you. Thank yeah. you, yes. Okay, thank you and good evening everybody and welcome. And can I say, hope you're all well and all your families. Um, my chaplain, Reverend Sally Bayliss, will say the prayers, and the prayers will include a dedication to the recent passing of former councillor Christine Lockett, followed by a, a one minute silence, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for inviting me to open with prayers. Let's start with a, a minute of silence in memory of councillor Christine Lockett who last served on the council in 2007. So let's now keep a minute's silence in her memory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now let's say a short prayer before the, the rest of this evening's meeting. We thank you, dear God, that you have brought us safely to this meeting. We thank you for technology that is making this possible in these difficult days. We pray, as we pray for our borough and our councillors who serve it, we acknowledge the uncertain times we live in full of so many changing rules and guidance. So we pray for wisdom and respect for each other as we discuss and debate the orders of the day. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. Thank you very much, Sally. Thank you. Thank you. Item two then, apologies for absence. Councillor Wilkinson, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just uh, apologies from Councillor Miller tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Sam Smith, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, all present and correct. Thank you very much. Caroline, would you mind confirming who is present for the benefit of people listening at home, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm able to confirm that um, the following councillors are present. Councillor Adams, Councillor Peter Barnes, Madam Mayor, Councillor Sandra Barnes, Councillor Barnfather, Councillor Bosworth, Councillor uh, Boyle, Councillor Brooks, Councillor Clark, Councillor Clooney, Councillor Collis, Councillor Crema, Councillor Elliot, Councillor David Ellis, Councillor Rachel Ellis, Councillor Roxanne Ellis, Councillor Elwood, Councillor Feeney, Councillor Fox, Councillor Gibbons, Councillor Greensmith, Councillor Gregory, Councillor Hollingsworth, Councillor Hope, Councillor Keneally, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Ron McCrossan, Councillor Viv McCrossan, Councillor Murray, Councillor Nayuk, Councillor Paling, Councillor Parr, Councillor Payne, Councillor Scroggy, Councillor Martin Smith, Councillor Sam Smith, Councillor Thomas, Councillor Talsey Hinton, Councillor Truscott, Councillor Wheeler and Councillor Wilkinson. I, I would also like to support the officers supporting today's meeting. Um, we have Mike Hill, who is the Chief Executive, Helen Barrington, who is the Monitoring Officer of the meeting, um, Alison Ball is Chief Financial Officer, 
uh, Dave Wakeling is the director, president, and Mike Avery, assistant director, and myself, Caroline McCleary, Democratic Services Officer and Clerk of the Council. Thank you very much, Caroline. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, darling. Uh, item three is the Mayor's announcement. Well, I've only got a couple of announcements. I'm going to ask you if you want to say something about Christine Luckett, if anybody would like to mention Christine. The first one, I just want to say, Lord Amella sends her love to everyone and wishes to remember to you all. And she says thanks to all who've sent her flowers and cards over the past weeks. And also, we've had a phone call from Bob Ritchie from the Phoenix Boxing Club, and he wishes to remember to you all, thanking John especially and all the staff for the help while it's been a very difficult time with the COVID. But they're going on all right now, and they're doing quite a bit. So, And he also says an especially big thank you to Mark, the caretaker, because he's been a great help. He's been tremendous. So thank you very much, everybody. Uh, now, if anyone, I'll give everybody an opportunity to say something about Christine Luckett. I know some of you won't have even met her or known her, but those who wish to say anything, please go ahead. Anybody? We've got Councillor Prima. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, just to say she will be missed. She was an extremely hard worker. She lived in the Carlton Hill Ward, but she was actually a councillor for Netherfield. And she did take those uh, duties very seriously. She walks around on a regular basis. She took cases up, and she wasn't sh she wasn't shy to come for advice. She never took took things that I know exactly. She would always ask advice from whoever was there. She would always get the right answer and the right solution for whatever problem was given to her. So she would be sadly missed. She was very conscientious as a counsellor. So my best wishes to her. And, well, to her. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Creamer. Anyone else? Councillor Adams. Councillor Adams. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, we'd just like to pass on our uh, deepest sympathy to the extended uh, family and friends uh, of Councillor Luckett. Um, and um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, we just want to send our best. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Councillor Adams. Anyone else? No? No, nobody, because I don't suppose a lot of you know her anyway. Right, finally, I would be very grateful if members could use the raise your hand button or put a message on the meeting chat if you would like to speak on any agenda item. And if members are unable to do this, you will still be given an opportunity to speak. And I'm therefore I'm asking Caroline to invite each and every one of you to confirm how you are voting, but this won't be a formal recorded vote unless it is specifically requested. Item four, to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of July and the 2nd of September 2020. Councillor Clark, would you like to move, please? Yeah, move it, move it, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Payne, to second. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I'd like to second the minutes and, and with your indulgence, Madam Mayor, commemorate um, the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain on this day after the 80th uh, anniversary and to pay respects to all of those uh, who lost their lives but also continue to serve and have previously served this uh, country so honourably, putting themselves in harm's way to protect us. And specifically, Madam Mayor, just why I have the floor, if I may, um, it's with um, deepest regret that I heard earlier this week that uh, long-standing Gedling Borough and Ravenshead resident Ivor MacDonald Sutton, Don Sutton, known to many of us, uh, after a short illness passed away this Thursday morning. Don was awarded in 2017 the highest award from uh, the French people, the Legion d'Honneur, for helping liberate France from the Nazis. He had a distinguished uh, career serving in uh, Palestine with the cavalry uh, regiment um, in France as well, um, in Syria, um, a, a long distinguished career. Being there at the ceremony, yeah. Madam, born on the 5th of May 1918 and, and tragically um, passed away in September 2020. So huge, huge respect. Donaldson and our deepest sympathy and condolences to, to Don's family uh, and wider friends and comrades that he served alongside Madam Mayor. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so sad to hear that. That's really, really sad. Thank you very much, Councillor Payne. 
Um, as the minutes are not normally voted down, I do not propose to take a vote. If any member is not content with this or would like to raise a point of accuracy on the minutes, could they please indicate now? Otherwise, or I will assume council is happy to approve the minutes. Yeah, okay, thank you. Item five, declaration of interest. Are there any declaration of interest? No. Thank you. Item six, to deal with any petitions received under standing order 8A. None received, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Item seven, to answer questions asked by the public under standing order 8. None received, Madam Mayor. Item eight, to answer questions asked by the member of the council under standing order 9. And again, none received, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Item nine is appointment of the Gedling Youth Mayor. The recommendation you see is on page 17 of the agenda. Councillor Viv McCrossan, would you like to move this? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm delighted to introduce this next item, which we consider the appointment of our second deadly youth mayor. Uh, members will recall that in May 2020, we appointed our first youth mayor, Abigail Hutchinson. In accordance with the uh, Council's youth mayor protocol attached to this report, Abigail was nominated by her peers from within the Gedling Youth Council on the basis of her long-standing experience representing Arnold Hill Academy and her exceptional contribution to the Youth Council Work Programme. As our first youth mayor, we have been, uh, she has been a fantastic role model for young people and supported the mayor brilliantly at a wide range of engagements, as I'm sure you would say, Mayor, throughout 2019-2020. We'll hear a bit more from Abigail about her experience and highlights of her civic year, but I would like to personally congratulate her on the outstanding commitment, professionalism and enthusiasm she has demonstrated in her role, setting a very high standard for others to follow. And I'm sure I echo all members in wishing her the very best for the future. The incoming Youth Mayor, I'm delighted to say, is Mohammed Malik, who has served on the Youth Council for over two terms, a period of almost five years, representing Hartley Woodville Youth Academy. He was a popular choice among the Youth Council members for the role of Youth Mayor, receiving no less than two-thirds of the total vote. During this time on the Youth Council, Mohammed has been extremely proactive in taking up opportunities such as the uh, NCC Youth Service Respect Training, recognising, celebrating, promoting cultural cohesion. He took part in the Council's Erasmus Youth Enterprise Project and has participated twice in the annual Children's Commission Takeover Challenge, taking over the Council's senior leadership meetings and advocated for young people's concerns to be embedded in our council plans and our priority. I am sure Mohammed will have even more to tell us about his experience and interest shortly. However, having met with him recently over Teams to congratulate him, I was really impressed with his thoughtfulness, consideration and consideration for those of our young people who are facing real challenges in our borough. And I know that he committed to making a real difference during his term of office. In these very unprecedented times, we are aware more than ever of the need to provide hope opportunities for young people to develop and shine. And I therefore have no hesitation in supporting for this nomination. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much, Councillor McCrossan. Councillor Fox, would you like to second, please? Um, yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. I'm happy um, and delighted actually to second this um, nomination um, and proposal tonight to appoint um, Mohammed as the next Youth Mayor from 2020 to 2021. And also to congratulate and wish um, Abigail Hutchinson all the very best for her future. She has been a positive role model for young people throughout the borough. She's been inspirational in serving um, our residents and um, we're very proud of her and the work that she's done with events um, and supporting the, um, the Gedling Mayor throughout her term. And we wish her 
the very best for her future. As regards um, Mohammed, um, as uh, Councillor McCrossan alluded to, we've actually met um, and congratulated um, Mohammed. And what struck me about him was his sheer enthusiasm for the community. Um, he, he is a very enthusiastic young man. He's very conscious about serving his community. He's already come up with a lot of ideas of how he can help young people within the borough, um, even throughout the pandemic. So I'm very proud of them both, and I know that we will um, wish them all the very best for their future, and we're very proud of them. So I'm very happy to second this proposal tonight, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Fox. Would anyone like to speak on this? No? Well, I just want to say I'm looking forward to meeting Mohammed, and I'm sure it won't be long. Um, Councillor McCrossan, would you like to close? Sorry, Madam Mayor, Councillor Smith has put his hand up. Oh, sorry. OK, Councillor Smith, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just echo um, what the Cabinet members just said about having a youth mayor and getting it's been great that um, I said at the time, as the youngest councillor on the council, that it was great that we had someone championing the youth of Gedling. And I'd like to thank Abigail for all her work during this year and uh, welcome Mohammed to the post and uh, look forward to the continuing engagement of young people for this forum. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Anyone else? No? Councillor McCoston, would you like to close, please? No. You muted. Can't hear you. Sorry, Madam Mayor. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank, thank you. I asked the council then on page 17 the recommendation that we appoint Mohammed Malik as the Gedling Youth Mayor for 2020-2021. Lovely. Thank you very much, Councillor McCroston. Can we now take a vote on this, Caroline, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, OK, so we have Councillor... Um, sorry, I do apologise. Sorry, Councillors. And when your name is called, please state for, against or abstain. And this is a reminder for Councillors to take themselves off mute at the time that they speak. <coughs> um, so we have Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Peter Barnes. For. Uh, Madam Mayor. For. Councillor Barnfather. For. Councillor Bosworth. For. Councillor Boyle. For. Councillor Brooks. For. Councillor Clark. For. Councillor Clooney. For. Councillor Collis. For. Councillor Creamer. For. Councillor Elliot. For. Councillor David Ellis. For. Councillor Rachel Ellis. For. Councillor Roxanne Ellis. For. Councillor Elwood. For. Councillor Feeney. For. Councillor Fox. For. Councillor Gibbons. For. Councillor Greensmith. For. Councillor Gregory. For. Councillor Hollingsworth. For. Councillor Hope. For. Councillor Keneally. For. Councillor Lawrence. For. Councillor Ron McCrossin. Oh. Councillor Viv McCrossan. Oh. Councillor Murray. Oh. Councillor Nayuk. Oh. Councillor Paling. Oh. Councillor Parr. Oh. Councillor Payne. Oh. Councillor Scroggy. Oh. Councillor Martin Smith. Oh. Councillor Sam Smith. Oh. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Towsey Hinton. Four. Councillor Truscott. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. And Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's carried. Thank you very much, Caroline. 
I would just now like to invite Abigail Hutchinson to give her speech as the outgoing youth mayor. But first of all, I want to say to you, Abigail, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Well done. And I wish you all the very best for whatever you want to do in the future, because I'm sure you'll succeed in whatever you do. OK, Abigail. Thank you for that. Um, as, as we mentioned, I'm Abigail and I had the honour of becoming the first ever youth mayor of Gatling. This position has allowed me to not only continue and advance my work in the community that I had previously done as an avid and active member of my local youth council, but has enabled me to meet the influential and inspiring people across my district, as well as do what I can to make a change. Within my role, I sat in council meetings and ensured that the younger generations were considered when finalising decisions within my community. As well as this, I completed outreach work, such as visiting schools, churches and some affairs to inspire young people and show them that you are never too young to make a difference. Most recently, pre-COVID of course, I presented at Mackerby Rotary Club, where I discussed the impact of my role on the local community and had the honour of receiving a cheque that was addressed to the charity of my choice. I chose to donate this to the Playwork Centre in Gadling, as they not only helped me when I was growing up, but also ensure that children are allowed to express themselves creatively, no matter their financial circumstances, which to me has always been really important. Um, overall, I wish to express my utmost gratitude and thanks to the outgoing mayor, Sandra Barnes. Um, she was an absolute honour um, and really great to work with, as well as highlight the hard work of every single councillor I had the delight of working with. It was truly an honour to fulfil the role and I look forward to someone else having the chance to serve the community. Um, I can say and back up councillors' um, opinions with 100% confidence that the upcoming youth mayor, Mohammed, um, will not only be an outstanding representative for our council, but will also do everything in his power to ensure Gadling continues to be an environment in which young people like myself are proud to be a part of. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Abigail. Well done. That was really, really well done. Brilliant. And I, I will miss you, my darling. Yeah. Take care. God bless. I'd just like to invite our newly elected youth mayor, Mohammed Malik, to speak to you all now. Is he coming on? No? Is he not coming on? No, don't look like he's there. Mohammed Malik? No. He is in the meeting, Madam Mayor. He's yeah, just a bit I can quiet. See him in the meeting. Are you there, Mohammed? No, oh, he's just put a message. It's not working. It's not. Um, yeah. Oh, no. Have you got a microphone? What are you actually on, Mohammed? Have you got a computer or a tablet? No. Mm. no. Right, just... It has been working. Right, he's, he's, he's going to switch there. onto his mobile phone, councillors, so if yeah. you could just bear with us, we'll see if we can get him in on that. Alec, can he dial in if he's, if he's having problems video? We had a meet, meeting with him recently, he got on fine. Really? Good, after, uh, good evening. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Mohammed, right. Over to you, my darling. So um, I just wanted to um, exp express my thanks to uh, Jane, first of all, for uh, developing this role uh, in the first place and giving the opportunity to young people in Gedling to be able to take a role to be able to influence the whole community in Gedling, as well as 
be role models um, to all of the young people in Gedling. Um, I want to give a massive thanks for the countless hours that she puts in to handling the youth council, um, as well as helping us get into the big council like we are now. Um, I would like to thank the people that um, voted for me in the youth council to be able to enable me to be able to become youth mayor. Um, and I hope that I fulfill the standards of this role and uphold the standards of the council. Um, in this role, I hope to be a role model for all young people in Gedling, no matter what their race, creed, religion or gender is. Um, I want to create opportunities for people in Gedling, young people, um, to be able to develop themselves and be the best that they can be and prove to them that there's nothing that they can stop them um, and that we will do everything that we can to help them in whatever they wish that they want to be. Um, and finally, I would like to thank Abigail for setting stepping stones for me as the incoming youth mayor and all oncoming youth mayors. Um, and I would just like to thank her for setting a great example for young people in Gedling. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mohammed. It's lovely to see you up there. And I'm looking forward to seeing you and working with you. Thank you, and you too. We will have the Christmas card competition, which we'll, we'll, we'll do, and you'll have to come in and do that. So that will be nice. But I wanted to sort something out. I'll sort it out with Caroline, that you come into the mayor's parlour with your mother and father, if that's OK. So Caroline will get in touch with you. But it's very nice to see you, and all the best in your youth role. I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you will. It might be, it's a difficult time, so we won't have a lot to do, but whatever we can get you to do, we'll get you to do. Okay, my darling? Yeah, thank thank you, very you very much. God bless, my darling. Take care. Thank, okay, you. thank, thank you. you. Right. Thank you. Item 10, proposed amendment to procedural standing orders substitute at committees. The recommendation is on page 25 of your agenda. This item was held up over the last meeting of Ordinary Council on 15th of July and has already been proposed and seconded by Councillor Clark and Councillor Payne. So would anyone like to speak on this? We've got Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Wilkinson, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just briefly want to say that I'm sure that anybody who's ever been a business manager in any authority uh, will wholeheartedly uh, support this, this measure, which is a very sensible one um, and, and can only serve to, to, to contribute to the, the, uh, the smooth workings of, um, uh, of, you know, of the council. And I wholeheartedly endorse it and uh, uh, it will certainly be getting my vote. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wimpinson. Anyone else? We've got Councillor Adams. Councillor Adams, please. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Yes, um, as Councillor Wilkinson has alluded to, um, being a, a business manager, utilising uh, a reduced, uh, uh, especially in summertime, a reduced uh, number of people to uh, to get onto uh, committees is, is difficult. And so um, to have available to you the entire sort of pool of the team, if you like, um, makes uh, the role in a lot easier um, and also you know will enable people I believe to get a much better experience across the whole council uh, and be less sort of pigeonholed if you like into specific groups for and give them that opportunity to really experience um, the whole place so yeah very much uh, in favour of this from our group and uh, you know look forward to seeing it in action thank you very much thank you very much Councillor Adams anyone else please Councillor Payne Councillor Payne thank you Councillor Payne. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to echo what Councillor Wilkinson said and to pay tribute and thanks to our officers who have helped bring this proposal forward, but also the cross-party nature, uh, the way in which this proposal was brought forward. I think particular credit deserves to go to, to Councillor Wilkinson, but also Councillor Larnfather, who I think, to be fair, kicked off the initial conversation about this proposal with myself and and, and John Clark um, as, as leader and deputy leader. So a particular thanks to, to Chris for some of the legwork uh, that he put in around this this proposal and to, to Paul Wilkinson as well, who I know has done a lot of work, but, but thank you to officers, uh, Madam Mayor as well, for, 
is sensible, pragmatic approach that I think will help uh, with councillors being able to fulfil their, their duties. Thank you very much, Councillor Payne. Anyone else? But Councillor Hope. Councillor Hope, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually opposed to this, um, <coughs> wholly and completely. Um, <coughs> the thing is that um, the system to date has worked fairly well. In fact, very well, I think. Um, so I, I see no advantages in this, except that we will now be in a situation where in any committee, um, any one of us, could turn in, which is not really um, what substitutes are about. Substitutes are there to um, monitor what goes on in those committees that they may be required to substitute for, so that they know something about it. Now we're in a situation where somebody could say, oh, do you know what, I can't have a meeting, well, who can I ring up? Oh, no blogs will do. He's never been on the committee before. Uh, if he's available, he can do it. Um, that's not, that's not uh, the intention of allowing substitutes. I would rather, in that situation, that we have no substitutions whatsoever. Basically, what you're saying is um, a substitute has no reason whatsoever to follow the programme of the committee that he's going to substitute for. And he will turn up on the day with no background, no knowledge, yeah. no experience of what's gone before, and then we'll make decisions on the back of it. Now, I don't think that's acceptable. I don't think that's what substitution is all about. I mean, quite clearly, we're now in a situation where presumably the borough council are now going to have to train all councillors for environment and licensing and for planning in order to make them all available for substitution. But what is the thinking behind this? Oddly enough, with virtual meetings, um, the, 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 the opportunity to not attend as such is, limited, is, is much limited because um, even if you can't get out the house, you, you, you can attend virtually. So, so I, I like to know what is the thinking behind this resolution, and I would like to know um, why it's been brought forward and why it is thought to be an improvement on the situation we've got now. And finally, of course, um, I really do think that what you're trying to do is make life easier for councillors because now they don't have to make sure that their substitute's available or, or, or miss a space. They simply bring somebody else up and say, can you go along here? It'll do the job. I, I, I really think this is a retrograde step and is in this view of the concept of substitute. I, I see substitution as being, um, I'm a substitute for some committees, I've had the training for those committees that I need to train for, and I do actually work, and I do actually pay attention to what's going on in those committees. Um, I really don't think you can expect every councillor to monitor the workings of every committee. That is unusual, but that is what this does mean, because at any time they could be required to substitute it. So, so no, I, I, I think it's an unnecessary step, and actually a retrograde step, because we will be getting committees on committees with no background, no experience, no knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hope, for your view. I'm sure someone is going to come in and say something. Uh, no. Councillor Barnfather was next, Madam Mayor. Councillor Barnfather, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. I've never heard such utter rubbish in my life. Oh. The, uh, every member of this council should uh, be omnicompetent to be able to perform any role on any committee. 
That's we're not we're not specialists in in specialised areas. We actually are there to represent our communities as individuals. The fact that we belong to a political group is, is a, a neither here nor there. The reality of it is that any quasi judicial committee, whether it be planning and licensing, uh, sorry, environment and, and licensing, or, or the planning committee, you have to have the necessary training in order to be able to sit. That's quite specific in the documentation. That's always uh, in the case. Uh, you would not be allowed to sit and make decisions on those committees if you had not had the appropriate training. For other, for other committees, we have working parties from overview and scrutiny. Those working parties do not always include members of the overview and scrutiny committee. They include any member who may have an interest in a specific item. The reality of it is that this um, motion that's before council today is to, in all in, to ensure that the council can conduct its business appropriately. It should not be right that a political group is not represented on a particular committee or their views represented simply because the individual member who is appointed to that committee or indeed their nominated substitute are unavailable either through illness, holidays or for whatever other reason may occur. This is a very, very sensible proposition. Can I add, say, I understand in Councillor Hope's position why he may be opposed to this, of course, because of the vast number of potential substitutes that he would be able to appoint in his place on the Carlton Independent Group. Oh, well done. Well done. Well thank done. you, Madam Mayor. Well done. Thank you very much, Councillor Barfather. Anyone else, please? Councillor Parr's next. Councillor Parr, please. Thank you. Yes. Uh, oh, got it. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah. do appreciate that. Um, reference to Councillor Bonfather's uh, comments just recently. My concern was that I wanted, if she's available, head of the legal department, Helen Barrington, to clarify the situation with regard to substitutes, especially on the major committees like planning and licensing. Right. Is Helen there? I, I just want clarification from Helen Barrington. Yes, if she's there. I think for, Helen. For the wider audience. Yes, thank, thank, thank you, Madam Mayor, if I may respond to that. So um, just yeah. to echo the comments that have been made by Councillor Barnfather, um, this particular proposal still requires uh, members of the um, Environment and Licensing Committee and Planning Committee to have training before they're able to be appointed and, and sit as members of those committees. But also that rule would apply to substitutes as well. So I note that, that Councillor Hope has, has made reference to the fact that 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 would mean that all members of council, if they are going to be substitutes on those committees, uh, would need to be afforded training. Officers are absolutely in a position where we're able to provide that training to uh, members in order that they can sit as, as subs on those particular committees. But just to be very, very clear, if a member has not had the relevant training, they will not be able to sit on those regulatory committees. Correct. Thank, oh, you, thank you. Thank you very much, Ellen. Thank you, Madam Bye. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Park, Councillor Park. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Smith. Sam Smith. Sam Smith. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just to reiterate, Councillor Bonfather is absolutely right. The whole point of this motion is to ensure that our residents are always represented on these committees. As a business manager it, of such a large group of eight, it, it's uh, um, difficult sometimes when our substitutes can't make it. But then our residents, that's a disservice to our residents. This isn't a political motion. This is to ensure our residents' voices are heard on all committees at all times. And then these, this council delivers for those people. It's so important that this motion is brought forward. And I'd like to thank everybody particularly the um, Paul and, and others who have been involved in making this happen and Chris on our side. So we need to vote for it to ensure that our residents are heard at all times. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Sam Smith. Anyone else? No? No? So should we take this vote then, Caroline, please? And Councillor Clark to close. Oh, Councillor Clark to close. Sorry, Councillor Clark. Thank you. I was being quiet, but yes, same with same with Chris, same with everybody else. It's uh, it is a victory for common sense, and it's been years in coming along this. So uh, 
there may be, uh, you know, everybody's got a right to opinion and uh, Mike Hope's uh, placed his there, but I think he's had a kilter with this lot. The, uh, there's, there's things such as now as COVID, there are sudden illness, there are deaths, there are transport delays, there are all sorts of things like that. And if we can keep our committees well packed with those people or represented by those parties, then I think that's the correct thing to do. Just to record my thanks, not only to the business managers, but particularly to Chris, because uh, I think Chris and I, we've been banging on about this since you, you got on the council and I was banging on before. So it's been a long while. But thanks to our officers who put it together and I move that we support it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Councillor Clark. Caroline, can we now take a vote on this, please? And can I just say, oh, no, Caroline will say it. Oh, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, councillors, when your name is called, please state whether you're for, against or abstain. And a reminder to take yourselves off mute at this time. Um, so, Councillor Adams. For. Councillor Peter Barnes. For. Madam Mayor. For. Councillor Barnfather. For. Councillor Bosworth. For. Councillor Boyle. For. Councillor Brooks. For. Councillor Clark. For. Councillor Clooney. For. Councillor Collis. For. Councillor Creamer. For. Councillor Elliot. For. Councillor David Ellis. For. Councillor Rachel Ellis. For. Councillor Roxanne Ellis. Councillor Elwood. For. Councillor Feeney. For. Councillor Fox. For. Councillor Gibbons. For. Councillor Greensmith. For. Councillor Gregory. For. Councillor Hollingsworth. For. Councillor Hope. Against. Councillor Keneally. For. Councillor Lawrence. For. Councillor Ron McCrossan. For. Councillor Viv McCrossan. For. Councillor Murray. For. Councillor Nayuk. For. Councillor Paling. For. Councillor Parr. For. Councillor Payne. <coughs> For. Councillor Scroggy. For. Councillor Martin Smith. For. Councillor Sam Smith. For. Councillor Thomas. For. Councillor Towsey Hinton. For. Councillor Truscott. For. Councillor Wheeler. For. And Councillor Wilkinson. For. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's carried. Thank you very much, Caroline. We're now on item 11, Local Government Mental Health Challenge. The recommendation for you to look at is on page 29. Councillor Wheeler, would you like to move it, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to bring this uh, progress report to Council. Um, many members may remember that on the 20th of April 2016, this Council resolved to make commitments uh, as part of the Local Government Mental Health Challenge. I think this progress report actually speaks volumes. It speaks for itself in terms of the huge amount of work uh, that this council has done to meet the uh, mental health challenge. Since the motion was passed, uh, addressing social isolation and loneliness, health inequalities in the community and supporting employees with their health and wellbeing has been priorities embedded in the Gedman Plan. Autumn reporting has taken place through the uh, Gedman Plan as well, uh, through monitoring to Cabinet and scrutiny. On the 6th of September 2018, Cabinet adopted the Health and Wellbeing Delivery Plan and mental health and wellbeing case studies to commitments were reported. On the 7th of November 2019, the Cabinet agreed to sign up to the Prevention Board Act for better mental health and the proposed action plan was reported. Uh, portfolio holders received multiple updates on the relevant mental health wellbeing programmes when appropriate to their remit. Uh, Appendix A gives an overview of the significant uh, amounts of uh, range of programmes that the Council has coordinated or supported. Uh, and these range from the Hall of Mental Health so Arnold Methodist Church and Health Training Scheme, we are here, and uh, Staff Employee Assistance Scheme. Uh, we have been very successful in working towards the challenge. Uh, Councillor Alex Scroggy, Scroggy, sorry, was appointed in the voluntary role as a mental health champion and our service manager for community relations and the lead officer. 
it would be an understatement, a huge understatement to say that uh, our communities have faced um, great challenges to their well-being from the COVID-19 pandemic and there's still much, much work to do. Uh, many local support groups are reporting their top meeting as a result of COVID-19 did not return. Um, many children miss that and a huge amount of education. Um, I work, personally I work uh, as a youth worker, as many people know, I also work at the local school in our area in the borough. Uh, and I know talking to a lot of young people, they have had um, some very um, challenging, challenging times and challenging experiences at this point in time. Um, I mean, and also many, many residents, many elderly residents, a lot of residents, no matter what their age, have experienced uh, really the most challenging COVID being social life as well. During these difficult times, the council's research strategy is committed to work with partners further. Uh, the Giving Together Humanitarian Response has seen 2,000 vulnerable people supported by the council through food parcel deliveries. Supported by the council, um, we've also, uh, also done a lot of signposting to a range of global activities locally. Uh, a volunteer friendly service has recently been established to support local people as well. Thank you. I, I, move, I move the report and um, I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wheeler. Councillor Clark, would you like to second, please? Yeah, we're there, I think. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I will say about the, the quality of this re recording. It's not just here. I've done yeah. loads of these and have been absolute rubbish all the way through the week. I don't know whether it's the weather or what it is, but anybody listening to this, apart from some of the content, they would switch it off because I hardly heard anything, and I don't know whether people can hear hear me now. But somehow, the sooner we go, they get back to to uh, some hybrid meeting or something that uh, represents where we can actually be in the same room and understand people. Just very quickly, uh, Madam Mayor, I, work, I, I really support this uh, the mental health and the work that we're trying to do. It's always been a Cinderella. It's always mm -hmm. been that health service. It's continued to be a Cinderella. And yeah. still is, and no government of any persuasion has really got hold of the problem with mental health. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll see that highlighted, and I mean highlighted through the COVID problems now. If you look at some of the figures that are quietly being, they're, they're being put out there, but the potential suicide, self harm, all mm -hmm. those kinds of things like that. And you've now got the whole lot of furlough people losing jobs, etc. The, the people who themselves are talking through these things continually. Talking, you know, uh, there's no really association with people. It's going to affect people's mental health and particularly the staff, which this is about. So I fully, fully welcome this and hope you pass it. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Councillor Clark, because suicides are on the up and it is, it's, it's really worrying. Would anybody else like to speak, please? We've got Councillor Mac uh, Viv McCrossan. Councillor McCrossan, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Wheeler, for um, updating us. I'd like to, I couldn't hear you very well, actually, uh, Councillor Wheeler, and I think that's what um, Councillor Clark was saying. But um, in essence, really supportive of what we're doing as a council. It's such a crucial thing that we continue to drive an improvement in, in services and support. And from my perspective, it's around young people. We know that uh, rates of anxiety have gone through the roof and, and have risen by 30%. And, um, you know, the impact on anxious young people in terms of um, thinking about their own development and going on into adulthood, what we don't want is long-term uh, users of mental health services. We want young people to get the services they need. And I know in terms of my role, my role will continually be to challenge, to make sure that we've got appropriate services around our communities to serve our young people. And I know that Councillor Wheeler, that's something that's really, uh, that you're driving through the Health and Wellbeing Board. So um, I'm absolutely supportive of what we're doing and we need to continue to drive and challenge our mental health. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Cross, and you're so right. Anyone else wishing to speak? No? No, not on this? Okay. Councillor Wheeler, would you like to close? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I move the report um, uh, as, as noted in, in the minutes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm experiencing quite a few difficulties in actually hearing people um, this moment. So I'm hoping most people heard what I had to say uh, in, 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 you know, about the context of the uh, mental health challenge. 
Um, it's really, really, really important, uh, more so than ever, uh, that we uh, ensure that we're supporting as many people as possible um, through this uh, very, very difficult time. So uh, I, I move that Council notes this report and, uh, and um, Council supports recommendations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wheeler. Can we now take a vote on this, please, Caroline? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just a reminder to councillors, um, if, if when your name's called, if you could state for, against or abstain, and if you could take yourselves off mute at this time. Thank you. Councillor Adams. At uh, four. Councillor Peter Barnes. Four. Madam Mayor. Four. Councillor Barnfather. Four. Councillor Bosworth. Four. Councillor Boyle. Four. Councillor Brooks. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Clooney. Four. Councillor Collis. Four. Councillor Creamer. Four. Councillor Elliot. Four. Councillor David Ellis. Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Roxanne Ellis. Four. Councillor Elwood. Four. Councillor Feeney. Four. Councillor Fox. Four. Councillor Gibbons. Four. Councillor Greensmith. Four. Councillor Gregory. Four. Councillor Hollingsworth. Four. Councillor Hope. Four. Councillor Keneally. Four. Councillor Lawrence. Four. Councillor Ron McCrossan. Four. Councillor Viv McCrossan. Four. Councillor Murray. Four. Councillor Nayuk. Four. Councillor Paling. Four. Councillor Parr. Four. Councillor Payne. Four. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Martin Smith. Four. Councillor Sam Smith. Four. Councillor Thomas. Four. Councillor Towsey Hinton. Four. Councillor Truscott. Four. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's carried. Thank you very, very much, Caroline. OK. Now on item 12, pavement licences under the Business and Planning Act 2020. The recommendation for you is on page 45 of the agenda. Councillor Payne, would you like to move, please? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm pleased to present this report, uh, which is on page 45, as, as you've just said, and the recommendation that functions under part one of the Business Planning Act 2020 be delegated to the Environment and Licensing Committee. The Business and Planning Act 2020 was given royal assent on the 22nd of July 2020 and introduced a new non-executive functions for district councils to issue pavement licences to business selling food and drink, enabling them to put furniture, whatever that may mean, on the highway adjacent to their premises. The legislation has been brought in rather swiftly in an attempt to stimulate the economy and enable business and perhaps particularly smaller businesses to offer outdoor areas for the consumption or purchase of food and drink. Some businesses being able to operate outdoors um, enables, for some of those businesses, it enables social distancing to be maintained without impacting on their capacity. This creation of a khaki style outdoor culture is considered to be in, or important in supporting the high street during COVID recovery. And that completely falls in with what we were planning for Arnold anyway. Usually two permissions are required before businesses can put furniture on the highway, planning permission for change of use and a permit from the highways authority. Highways authority permits can still be obtained from the highways authority. However, the new legislation provides a much swifter process for gaining pavement licenses at district level. And once a license is given, it is treated as deemed planning permission. Interesting for uh, the, the planning committee. 
The legislation makes clear that the issuing of pavement licences is a non-executive function. As such, the function sits with full council until delegated to the relevant committee. This was a last minute adjustment to the legislation and given the speed within which the legislation was passed, there was not sufficient time to call for a full council meeting to formally delegate the function. And in order that we could ensure we could fulfill our own statutory duty to de determine pavement licenses from 22nd of July, an urgent decision was taken by the chief executive in consultation with the mayor to delegate the powers to the director of community health and wellbeing to exercise the functions under the act. Going forward, given that this is a licensing function, it's considered appropriate to ensure that a formal delegation of function is in place to the Environment and Licensing Committee. It's, unlong, it's unclear how long these powers will apply, and it may well be the case that they cease next year in 2021, September. However, the function should have committee oversight. In practical terms, a lot of work has been done by officers to enable the council to start processing pavement license applications as soon as the legislation came into force. In accordance with the Act, applications for pavement licences have to be made electronic electronically. I can't say that. Electronically. So an inline application process was set up and it was agreed that applications could be made without a fee, which was the approach taken by most districts in Nottingham. The process is quick once applications are received. The council has to publicise the application and allow a seven day public consultation. There is also consultation with the highways authority, the police, planning and environmental health. Following the seven day consultation period, the council has seven days to determine the license application. If the council doesn't determine the license in 14 days, the license is deemed to be granted until September 2021. Conditions have been published that attach to all pavement licences. These include conditions in relation to obstruction of the highway and that there must be a smoke-free area as part of the outdoor area. Once granted, licences will remain in force until September 21. But the council does have enforcement powers and licenses can be revoked where license conditions are not complied with. So far, there's been no take up of this pre process in the borough. Indeed, many premises may already have their own private land on which to place their furniture or may already have a permit from the highways authority. Nevertheless, the work done to enable the council to perform this function has been excellent and a real collaborative effort against various service areas. So I wish to congratulate the officers involved. Thank you to them. Once a pavement license is issued, it permits the placing of that furniture on the highway only. It doesn't apply to any furniture on the private land. Other regulatory frameworks still apply, such as the need for alcohol licenses if alcohol is being sold, and the need to register the premises as a food business if it isn't already. So whilst the operational framework for dealing with licences has been put in place and applications can be processed going forward, there does need to be some committee oversight of the function. I therefore move the recommendation on page 45 of the agenda that functions under part one of the Business and Planning Act 2020 be delegated to the Environment and Licensing Committee even if no applications are ever made. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Payden. Councillor Clark, would you like to second, please? Whoops. Yeah, form the second and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Right, would anyone like to say anything on this? No? Uh, Councillor Barnfather was first. Right, Councillor Barnfather, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I think this is a very sensible piece of legislation and a very sensible way that uh, the Borough Council implements that legislation. We've long uh, um, looked at and wished for a cafe-type culture in our main centres of uh, 
uh, of retail. Um, I think that's the only way that we're going to actually move forward. If the big attraction now is to uh, order online through Amazon or any of the other uh, many and varied online retailers, our main centres of retail, Arnold, Carlton, Mapley Top, etc., are clearly going to become ghost towns. So we have to make the offer far more attractive than merely going into a shop and buying something. If we can make it a more pleasurable experience by um, uh, having these um, cafe type premises available for people to be able to enjoy the whole experience and make it a day out rather than an arduous chore. And that's clearly the way forward. And particularly at this time, obviously with uh, the restrictions placed on uh, these types of premises by the uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, whereas normally they would have had a significant number of people able to enjoy uh, their offer within inside the premises, they obviously now clearly in order to be economically sustainable need to look to be able to expand their offer to outside of the premises. All I would uh, ask is, and I, and I know that uh, the chair of the um, Environmental Licensing Committee will have already had this in mind, is that we have a sensible uh, interpretation and implementation of this. Um, it can't be a, a way for retailers to get around the fact that they can store stock on the pavement rather than merely extend their offer for uh, people being able to sit down at, uh, using tables and chairs. We can't have boxes piled high on the pavement. We do have to be aware that the partially sighted for um, young mothers with um, buggies, double buggies, they still do need to be able to uh, access the pavements. The pavements are there for a primary purpose. Um, so we just need to be conscious of how, as I say, that we actually implement this. Having just returned from Greece, where actually you, you are unable to walk on the pavements because pavement cafes and bars extend to the pavement edge, uh, where they seem to think that they're planting a tree smack in the middle of a pavement or putting a lamppost smack in the middle of the pavement doesn't in some way obstruct the pedestrian um, I'm sure we won't be going down that road, but I welcome the legislation that's uh, uh, been made and the motion that's before us today. Thank you very much, Councillor Barnfather. Anyone else wishing to say anything on this? Councillor Elwood. Councillor Elwood, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, clearly, the, the intentions of this uh, act are, are good. It's to help uh, businesses during the, the COVID um, uh, situation. So in general, it, it seems to make sense. That The only thing I have a slight concern about, and may, maybe uh, uh, Council, Councillor uh, Paling may be able to clarify, um, will the Environment and Licensing Committee be able to uh, refuse uh, um, a, a licence uh, under this uh, act where maybe uh, a cafe environment is very close to a residential uh, property where it could maybe create uh, problems for, for people who live very close by. Uh, they may be okay with having a cafe restaurant indoors but not necessarily out on the pavement right next to the, those houses. So maybe just a little bit of clarification on that point would, would be would be uh, hope that would be uh, uh, useful. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elwood. Councillor Payne, would you like to say anything? Any other questions first? Oh, any more questions then? Before she has to close. Oh, okay. Councillor Sam Smith was next. Councillor Sam Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's only right that the Conservative government makes these temporary changes by introducing the Business and Planning Act 2020, which is creating a streamlined and cheaper process for businesses such as cafes, restaurants and bars to secure a licence to place furniture on the highway. We've all seen that COVID restrictions mean that the capacity has been reduced in these um, businesses, putting jobs at risk. And this act supports businesses across Gedling to operate safely whilst social distance measures remain in place. It will increase the capacity and provide much needed income over the coming months whilst protecting as many hospitality jobs as possible. I know the fantastic hospitality businesses within Trent Valley, like Rhubob's Tea Room that I was in last week in Burton Joyce, will be unable to benefit from this and it is great to see our council moving it forward. Finally, um, the modification is absolutely right that the responsibility of this should fall to the Environment and Licensing Act 
and we will be supporting this motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Sam Smith. Anyone else, please? Councillor Gibbons. Councillor Gibbons, thank you. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just a point of clarification. I'm fully support supportive of the, of the motion and its its intentions. In terms of the environment and licensing committee, will will there be any representations uh, or sort of like disputes coming before the committee, um, as, such as when we uh, when we, we we debate taxi licences, uh, and will there, will there be any training for the, uh, the committee members if they do come before committee? Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gibbons. Anyone else? Councillor Payne. Councillor Payne, thank you. Thanks, uh, Madam Mayor, and, and, and thanks to Councillor Poling for the um, comprehensive introduction to the uh, report. She may cover it in closing the um, in closing the debate, but the just for Councillor Elwood's information, the authority, the li licensing authority, has the option to grant the license in respect of any or all of the purposes specified in the application to grant the license for some or all of the part of the highway specified in the application and impose conditions or it can refuse the application so it does have the power to refuse the application and there's an extensive list of conditions um, and things to be taken into consideration um, not least public health and safety including security public amenity accessibility uh, issues around uh, obstruction and, and other related issues that I think Councillor Elwood uh, referred to. There, there's some really helpful guidance on the government website, um, which takes you through step by step in a flowchart about how the process will uh, will work. But hopefully that addresses the point. If Marge wasn't going to uh, cover that in 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 closing the um, in closing the the debate, but I think this makes absolute sense and it's a good example of. Uh, localism in action uh, working with uh, the central state uh, these things can't be achieved by pulling levers in whitehall and westminster they have to rely on um the local knowledge of, of local authorities and i think this process makes sure that we've got the knowledge of local members involved through through councillor polling's committee so fully support the proposal before us madam mayor thank you very much councillor payne anyone else wishing to speak councillor no. boyle madam mayor councillor boyle thank you Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a quick question. I'm, I'm generally supportive of this, but picking up on uh, Councillor Elwood's point and other points that have been made, uh, the question I have, and maybe Councillor Paling could address that in her closing remarks, is, is there a, an opportunity for uh, residents, say in my ward in Plains, to object to an, to an application in a similar but um, um, perhaps speeded up way on, on an application so that conditions can be appropriately applied as uh, Councillor Gibbons has been talking about as well. That's, that, that's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Boyle. Anyone else? Uh, Councillor Adams is next. Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, just a little observation of this uh, working um, already. We um, had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with the Nelson in Burton Joyce, um, a conversation they were trying to determine how they were going to fulfil um, their ability to deliver their product to their customers. Um, as a result of um, obviously COVID and the issues they're having inside their premises, um, they weren't actually aware of this um, policy uh, that was up and coming. Um, we'd obviously heard about it already, so we had a, a discussion with them and they've since gone ahead and discussed it further, looked at the local plans and they thought their car park was actually owned by the local authority. Uh, again, some whispers that had gone on in previous times, but had actually then gone on and look at the land documents and confirmed that they actually owned the car park. So I actually had a telephone call today uh, from the manager to thank us for the information. Um, and also the possibility that they can actually continue to do business at almost full capacity, even during uh, times uh, as difficult as this. So uh, great policy. Uh, look forward to seeing it in action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Adams. Anyone else? No? No. Councillor Palin, would you like to close? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you to everyone for those contributions. Um, seven days is a very short time for a public consultation, but hopefully we can stay on top of it to help our lo local people um, know that that is happening. Um, and likewise, in, in answer to Councillor Gibbons, I think like many taxi licences, 
this will go through the, the offices. Uh, we only hear of the very small percentage of what I call naughty taxi drivers. The majority of licenses are processed without any problem whatsoever. I'm quite happy uh, that the enforcement function being given to us could well improve things for us. Current enforcement sits under highways um, and is rarely enforced, even though I know there are some premises that do overspill their own, I think the word is curtilage in uh, planning terms. Uh, they um, repeatedly do it, but it's very difficult to do anything. When we have the enforcement right, we will be able to make sure that people follow their licensing conditions. So I'm looking forward to people using this. I'm not sure it will be appropriate for the Nelson because, as you say, they own that land. They aren't, aren't going to be applying um, to put furniture on the uh, highway. And uh, definitely the refusal option gives us the right to refuse where it would be a danger to grant a license. I hope that I've answered everybody's points. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Palin. Can we now take a vote on this then, Caroline? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just, um, councillors, when your name's called, please state for, against or abstain and please take yourselves off mute at this time. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adams. Yeah, for. Councillor Peter Barnes. For. Madam Mayor. For. Councillor Barnfather. For. Councillor Bosworth. For. Councillor Boyle. For. Councillor Brooks. For. Councillor Clark. For. Councillor Clooney. For. Councillor Collis. For. Councillor Creamer. For. Councillor Elliot. For. Councillor David Ellis. For. Councillor Rachel Ellis. For. Councillor Roxanne Ellis. For. Councillor Elwood. For Councillor Feeney. For Councillor Fox. For Councillor Gibbons. For Councillor Greensmith. For Councillor Gregory. For Councillor Hollingsworth. For Councillor Hope. For Councillor Keneally. For Councillor Lawrence. For Councillor Ron McCl McCrossan. For Councillor Viv McCrossan. For. Councillor Murray. For. Councillor Nayuk. For. Councillor Paling. For. Councillor Parr. For. Councillor Payne. For. Councillor Scroggy. For. Councillor Martin Smith. For. Councillor Sam Smith. For. Councillor Thomas. For. Councillor Towsey Hinton. For Councillor Truscott. For Councillor Wheeler. For and Councillor Wilkinson. For thank you, Madam Mayor. That's carried. Thank you very much, Caroline. We're on to item 13 now to receive questions and comments from members concerning any matter dealt with by the executive or by a committee or subcommittee standing order 11.1. There are 10 sets of minutes on this agenda, so I therefore propose to take them all as one. So if any member would like to ask a question or make a comment about any of the minutes, would you please indicate when you are asked by using the raised hand button or by putting a message on the meeting chat? If you're unable to do this, please speak up in a few moments when you're asked. OK, can I remind you that you must refer to the page number that you are speaking about? So first of all, item 13, minutes A to E, are there any comments or any questions? No? Everybody happy? Items F to J, any comments or questions? No? No? Is that it? No, so no one would like to ask a question or a comment? No? OK. Item 14, to consider comments of which due notice has been given. Uh, none received, Madam Mayor. Thank you. 
understanding order 13.3a. Right. 15 item to consider motions understanding order 12. One motion has been received and is at the front of your agenda. Councillor Adams, would you like to move it? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I've worked, in, uh, worked in IT now for some 22 years um, full time. One of the key things you learn very early on is the protection of your data. If you have a picture of your family that's irreplaceable, you back them up. This ensures that if a disaster happens, you have the means to recover that data, a disaster recovery plan. My group and I are determined to ensure that Gedlin always has a plan if the worst happens. 230 jobs have been lost, 230 people not taking a paycheck home to their families to pay for food, rent or their mortgage or to put fuel in the car. People from St Anne's, Bulwell, Sherwood, Stenton and many others uh, whose taxpaying money has disappeared uh, as a result of lost funds. Um, £34 million of taxpayers' money lost in total to date, loaned or guaranteed of £64.9 Annual losses on the tram last year of over £18 million. All that hard-earned taxpayers' money. As a council, they're over three quarters of a billion in debt. Cuts in services are now coming for those hard-working residents. And that, Madam Mayor, is not a plan for disaster recovery we want Gedlin residents to have to face. And all this without even taking into account the effects of the pandemic. So why here? I've seen asked in the press. Well, we have to know what risks are coming Gedling Council's way, cuts to services are coming in the city. Would that mean staffing cuts and if the worst happens and the city have to issue the 114 notice, for example? 114 notice, by the way, means that no expenditure is permitted, with the exception of safeguarding vulnerable people and statutory services. Who's going to hire the staff? You know, what is the contingency in play? And that's why it's key to understand what contracts we have in place or which services we share. 28th of March 2018, Gettling Borough Council leader John Clark said, I'm very pleased as leader of Gettling Borough Council to be signing the Metro strategy. This will benefit many of our residents who work in the city and in Derby. It will be an opportunity for us to work together on projects and explore funding opportunities, which could ultimately save money and improve services for all our residents. We're moving and the Metro strategy is light years ahead. I think things will start to happen very quickly. He also said we'll make sure we put Gettling and the people of Gettling first before all the politics of everything. And that's a small history lesson out of the way. And now to the here and now, now to the motion, which is as follows. This council being concerned by the present state of affairs, Nottingham City Council resolves that officers should immediately instigate a full review of all contracts between Nottingham City Council and the wholly owned companies or shared services thereof and this council. The outcome of this re review should be presented in the next meeting of the full council. The purpose of this review being to ensure that services provided under these contracts are presently of an adequate standard of properly managed and offer the best value for money for Gedling residents and provide an assessment of potential risks posed to the delivery of services to Gedling residents and other under these contracts by the present financial position of Nottingham City Council. Further, the officer's review should provide a full list of any presently effective contracts between the council and Nottingham City Council and any wholly owned companies or shared services thereof. B, in respect of each contract, provide a summary of the principal contractual arrangements include the costs of the same to this council. Provide the date when each contract will conclude or the next possible date for conclusion of the same. Set out in outline proposals for alternative methods of providing such services with the minimum of disruption to residents in the event that Nottingham City Council and any wholly owned companies or shared services thereof become unable to meet their contractual obligations. I was incredibly happy <laughs> um, to open uh, my inbox yesterday afternoon and see that the leader had accepted and not only that, but acted on our motion and took this as seriously as we did in our group. Um, I would like to thank him and the officers for the work they carried out. Considering the swift and positive action, I was a little surprised to see some social media posts from certain opposition members calling this political posture in and a waste of time. Um, but we haven't done politics for a while, so I think we can forgive them for getting a bit excited. But luckily, the decision has been made elsewhere. I'm glad that you realise the importance of our motion, Councillor Clark, and why getting up, checking on and reviewing such things are key for not only disasters like we've witnessed, but also for ensuring as taxpayers, Gedling residents, are getting the best for their pounds. We are determined always to protect Gedling Borough resident services and ensure that these are carried out properly. With this in mind, I would hope that he would look to pause any new contracts and partnerships with the City Council indefinitely until such a date when we are aware of the full losses and how that Council plans to repay 
that money to its residents. Finally, I do not wish to move the motion, and as I don't wish to postpone, as per standing order 12.03, it shall be treated as withdrawn. Thank you. Councillor Adams, thank you very much. So, do I ask if Councillor Murray wants to second? Um, yes, yes. Yes. Councillor Murray, would you like to second? Um, Madam Mayor, since um, Councillor Adams has moved the motion, yeah. Um, it falls as a result of uh, standing order 12.03. Uh, the um, motion is considered withdrawn unless the council votes to postpone it. And I wouldn't invite the council to do that. Uh, and as the seconder of the motion, I would like to express my own gratitude to the leader for acting so swiftly and with such frankness uh, uh, in response to our motion. Uh, and, um, and I entirely support the um, decision of Councillor Adams to uh, not move the motion so that it therefore stands withdrawn. Thank you very, very much, Councillor Murray. Is there anybody to speak? No. That's it. Thank you very much. Okay. So now, is that it? That's finished. Okay. Yeah. So I, I believe Council is actually finished. Yeah. Yeah. So I thank you all for attending the full council and I, I wish you all a nice evening for what's rest of the evening and take care everyone all the best thank you, thank you. Thank you madam mayor goodbye